What's up, guys? This is Ignite Takeover. I'm Mike Davis. We got Jeremy Pargo with us. The first thing you just told me, Jeremy, is you said you're an overbearing uh. personality. <laughs> you're a lot to handle. What does that mean? Um... I don't have a filter, I guess you could say. I like that. I That's good for I'm, interviews. I'm, I'm going to say what I want. I'm going to say how I feel. And I, you either take it or you don't. <laughs> now, let's, I mean, let's be real. You are the oldest player, I think, on the team, right? By 30, far. 37 years old. By you look far. very young, though. You, I don't know. You got about a good skincare regimen or something going on. I just wake up. You do? That's okay. <laughs> but see, you. You are the oldest player on the team. Is that something, the no filter, that being that vocal, is that something that comes with age, or were you always like this? Was Jeremy Pargo um, like this as a youngster? As a youngster? I don't, I don't know if I was like this as a youngster. Um, I'm probably like this now because I wasn't like this as a youngster. I wish I was a little more vocal in terms of the way I felt about things, but, you know, it, it comes with age where you have to get your point across, and sometimes you can't be sensitive to everyone's feelings at all times but most of the time I'm joking like having that. a good time make pretend I'm modest or you know Ron or Almanza make pretend just tell me give and me an example of something see, you would tell see, me see as a, as the old guy on the team as a leader you have to pick and choose how you talk to each person as a player or gotcha or women, anything, you have to talk to them differently. So, so ex- who am I speaking exam- to right so now? So let's let's start with Ron. Make pretend I'm Ron, Ron and, I, and okay. you want to tell me something. Ron, you're a scorer. Stop. What are you passing for? Let me pass. What are you doing? Okay, don't raise your voice. There you go. See? I, I mean, I don't know if he would say that. He wouldn't. Ron, <laughs> Ron would literally be like, you right. Okay, you right. Okay, now talk to me like I'm modest. <laughs> what did modest do, though? It all depends on what he did. See, he did something bad. He did something bad? Yeah. Defensively or offensively? Defensively. Modest, that's your rotation. What, why wouldn't you... He's going to say, my bad. My bad. Man, I think you have acting in your future. You, uh, you don't know, but I actually am. Are you? Are you... Yes. I have a whole movie. See? What, tell us about that. Uh, so, We're uh, going off course, but I, I got to hear this now. I co-wrote a film, uh, executive produced it, and I'm the lead actor in it. And what is it about? Uh, it's a romantic comedy. Oh, wow. Mm. Okay. And the lead, the lead, he's a vocal guy. Uh, he is a guy in search of understanding of himself and love. See? And how does that play into your real life? Heavy. <laughs> Heavy. <laughs> Heavy. It's, uh, it's pretty fitting. Um, you guys will hear about Braylon McNeil very soon. What's it called again? His name is Braylon McNeil. And what's um, the name of it? The name of it is The Final Play. All right, we're going to be learning a lot about that. You know, you're (laughs) such an interesting guy. So, you know, you're from Chicago. You go to Gonzaga. Um, What did you learn about yourself as a player at Gonzaga? There's a lot of guys on the team. Uh, We got, you know, Stockton. We got Gilder. So there's a lot of influence from Gonzaga on this team. Uh, From that veteran leadership, what do you, what do we learn from Gonzaga and that time being there? And how has that helped Helped you, you know, progress throughout your career. How's it reflected the way you are as Where, a person? Where's my camera? Because these 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 questions see, this, are getting heavy. See, this is an actor. I'm number three. Right, these questions are this is heavy a, right now. Uh, I mean, Gonzaga was 20 years ago for me. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know how much weight it holds for this. But I mean, it's I mean, it doesn't cultivate who you are as a player, as a person. I mean, it, put it this way: if you if you were coming out of high school right now. Think about how different this is and how the game has evolved in the way, you know, prospects trying to reach the NBA has changed. That was G League, Ignite, that wasn't a thing back then. No. Now all these guys who would be considering Gonzaga mm-hmm. are now with Ignite. So tell us about how the NBA has shifted and, you know, now, the how the NBA has shifted, has shifted. That's, a, that's a different question because yeah. it definitely has shifted. The game is a, it's a very different game right now. Um, the NBA is all about... Six five and up and six seven. It was um, years ago. It was a GM. Um, I don't even know his name, but for the Atlanta Hawks, he wanted to put all forwards on the court, from mm. six seven to six nine to six ten, all of that. And that's what he did. And he took a player over Chris Paul. It was a mistake. He drafted someone over Chris Paul, but um, he was ahead. Of, he was ahead of his time because that's what it is now. That every team wants to put. Six, 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 seven, all on a court at one yeah. time because now that lends itself to switching everything on defense. Right. Um, the game is faster. Everyone can can score, and everyone's a different skill. Yeah. 
Who was so, that, Josh Smith? Who was uh, that? No, no, that was uh, Marvin Williams. Oh, Marvin from, Williams from uh, UNC. North, yes, they, yeah. they took him over. Um, wow. Was Chris that Paul, Danny who, Ferry, the GM? I'm not even oh, sure. Interesting. But Marvin. he was ahead of his time because yeah. that's what the game is now. If you look at NBA, if you, I watched the draft this past year. I think the shortest guy taken was 6'5". In right. the first round. Yeah, yeah. So I, I, I completely understand the, the, the evolution of the game. Yeah. And, um, you know, me being 6'2", um, I can see, yeah. you, know, you, know, you know, the, the, the intrigue of the, the bigger guys that can play point and all being that. Being a veteran on this team and seeing, you know, your role as a leader and not only just about winning because you've had so much success overseas. I mean, let's just talk about this. I mean, you've, you've really killed it in the Euro League. Uh -huh, I, mean, I appreciate you're it. You're like one of the guys who, are, I mean, are, are just – you had a f phenomenal success overseas, but you've played in China, you know, Israel, Italy, it's Russia, a long Spain. List. I mean, yes. and then even just from, you know, the Cavs, the Sixers, the Grizzlies, you know, all over. Even back in 2017, 2018, you played with the Santa Cruz Warriors mm -hmm. and you're like first stint with them. How mm -hmm. much has the G League itself evolved from the Santa Cruz Warriors in that first time around to now what you're seeing with the Ignite? One thing about the G League is. I don't think the G League gets enough respect. It's a lot of guys in the G League that can really play this game we call basketball, really play. Um, and my first extent, my first stint in the G League, it was actually, it's actually a funny story because my brother was coaching for the Windy City Bulls at the time. I was playing in China. And my whole goal at that point was to come back. I had never played in the G League at this point. And I'm thinking like, yo, I'm, I wanna play, for, I'm gonna play for my brother. Is this you know? Gennaro? Yes. Okay. And I'm, I'm Shout out to Gennaro. Uh, I was thinking um, I'm, I'm going to finish the season in China. We finished early in China, and I'm going to go back and play in the G League just to play for my brother to say that I was able to play for my brother as a coach. Um, so I get back. The Bulls don't have the, 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 I guess, the pick to take me. So if I enter the, the G League, they can't guarantee that I end up there. They were 13th. The Warriors had the first pick. Oh, okay. Um, so I talked to my brother, and he's like, yeah, we can't get up there to take you. So if you want to play, then, yeah, you should do it. But if you were trying to specifically play here, then, you know what I'm saying, we, we wouldn't be able to get you. It's 13, 14, 12 other teams in front of us. Um, so I was like, all right, cool, I'm not playing. <laughs> and I get a call from uh, Aaron Miles. Shout out to Aaron Miles, who's a, a good friend now. Um, and he was like, yo, are you interested in playing? He was the head coach of Santa Cruz at the time. Yeah. And I was like, I mean, I told him a story as to why I was thinking about the G League, and um, he laid it out for me and let me know what it would be. And, and I said, I said, yeah, I play. I wanted to play basketball, and, and it turned out to be a good decision. I had a great time there. Hmm? Well, how would your career? Have you ever thought about this? How would your career be different if you're coming out of high school and instead of going to Gonzaga, you had something like this? <laughs> I think about that on a daily basis. You do <laughs> too much. And what what would be different? A lot. <laughs> in what ways? Uh, I don't know, but a lot. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, do you think a lot of these guys who have these five-star prospects, who have so much promise, you know, they're so talented, they have so much, uh, you know, with social media, everything's completely different. Mm -hmm. You said you were like 20 years ago, yeah. you can say. So it's a different world. Completely. But do these guys have a better ability to take, you know, are they more amenable to veteran insight and coaching and understanding than you think previous generations were? Or just because you have to, like a guy like mm. Scoot, from what I understand, he had such a maturity about the way he was approaching the game of basketball that it's totally different. Do these youngsters on the team right now, do you feel that they approach the game the same way? I, I think every player is different. Um, I, I'll use myself as, as the example. Yeah. Um, me playing overseas for years, it would be times where I come into practice, I'm an upbeat personality. Um, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm having fun while playing basketball. But there's been times where people have said, yo, um, like, I don't think you're taking it serious. That's not true at all. I just can enjoy what I'm doing while being serious. So um, everyone's different. Scoot is a more serious personality from what I've been told. I don't know Scoot. Everything I know is that he's, let's get it done. This is, this is the way it is. And... Um, me, I'm, I'm more of a, I'm going to get it done, but I'm yeah. going to smile while doing it, I guess you can say. Um, so it, it varies from player to player. People are different. Um, and, and that's one thing we don't need to lock ourselves into is thinking everyone has to get to the same goal the same way. 
Yeah. Um, personalities are different. Hmm. It's a very interesting thing. You, you're very, uh, you have a very interesting perspective on a lot of things. Um, <laughs> I like, I like talking to you. I could ask you nine zillion questions. Um, <laughs> so, um, the way that the league has shifted with these guys who are getting this kind of experience right now, I think what's so fascinating is, to me, I'm a big time basketball fan that didn't play at a high level, but what's so under interesting for our audience to understand I think is you know you're killing it in Euro League you're trying to play on all these rosters you're playing in NBA I think you know 86 NBA games you know you're everything's about winning a championship right but this Ignite team it's a different construct it's not just about putting the best team out there and trying to win a championship mm -hmm. there's also this dichotomy of well yes that's part of what we do but we also hang our hat on developing and cultivating talent. That's an interesting thing for the first time, for a 37 year old, for the mm -hmm. first time in your career, it's almost like you're engaging with something a little different. Tell us what that's like for you. Um, well, first off, you still come into the situation with winning as the goal. Um, the understanding part comes into you're also being an older brother or teacher to young guys that are, are dying and starving for an opportunity to get to the highest level in which these guys are gonna get there because they're that talented. So taking yourself out of it, it makes it easy to do because we know what the end goal is and we are going to try and win along those lines, but we know that we want to develop these guys who are tremendously talented, which I probably stole that word from Deion Sanders right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they have yeah. endless amounts of talent. Um, so to see those guys get to their ultimate goal and live the dream and everything that they want that we want for them and the dream that we wanted to live as well. Yeah. I don't think it's winning a championship here wouldn't make us any more happy than seeing that. All right. I yeah. love it. Um, real quickly as we're wrapping this up, um, you got a lot going on. So you got this whole <laughs> acting thing. Who are you like as an actor? Tell me, like, who um, would you... I don't know who I'll compare acting? myself to. Because everybody has different, like you said, everybody has different approaches to leadership, mm -hmm. to the way they play the game. I like, you said, I like to come with a smile on my face. Daniel Day-Lewis, when he's playing Abraham Lincoln, he goes full method. Who's he doesn't know one which of the best actors to ever walk the face right. of Earth. So he yeah. walks around and let's just say there's a break on set. Mm -hmm. Yo, Daniel, you want something from Chipotle? He's not acting like, he doesn't know what Chipotle mm -hmm. is because he's Abraham Lincoln. Correct. How how do you approach acting? I, I haven't gotten to that point where I have to get that deep okay. just yet. I wouldn't mind it. Um, Did but you take any classes? or? That is the craziest thing. Uh, the way I decided to do this was based off my personality. And for you to meet me for the first time and you say you give me an actor, kind of says something, right? Well, yeah, you have that kind of personality. About exactly. You. You that, that's what made me do it was my personality. Okay. I mean, like I said, I have a big personality. Um, I'm one of those people you either love or you hate. <laughs> so. I love it. Let's let's wrap this up by doing a scene. Let's end. Oh. You you tell me. It. Let's do a scene together, and we'll we'll wrap this baby up. Okay. Um, I'd rather you play a clip from from my movie at at, at some point as opposed well, to we me can, having we'll to do it now. We'll toss to a clip too. Uh, <laughs> let's play it. You want to play it? Let's play a scene in your movie. Let's do that. Um, Give me a character and what my motivation is. That's what act. That's actor terminology. Um, motivation. And you can... Okay, your name is... Let's say your name is Gerard. Ger that is my name. Oh, there you go. There. Okay, Gerard. Okay. Gerard. Okay. And you're and trying we... to get me to understand... I'm going full method. Let's do it. You're trying to get me to understand that my issues and relationships aren't because of other people. They're because of me. Ooh, this is deep. Okay, and what was your character's name again? Braylon. Braylon. Braylon like Braylon Edwards. Edwards. Yes. The old wide receiver wide for the receiver Browns. For, yes. You stole it from him? I love that name, actually. It's a, it's a nice name. I met Braylon when I was in um, the college dunk contest, actually. He was a judge. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. That's how old you are? Wow. That's how old I am. <laughs> I'm joking. No, it's That was true. a long time ago. It's true. Ohio State, I believe. Right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, so, was it Michigan? Or Michigan, I forget. I think it was Michigan. Okay. It's all, it all bleeds together. It, we'll guys. figure it out. But those are two schools we can't mix up. No, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm Gerard, you're Braylon. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to explain to you, man, listen, the problems that you keep finding yourself with the relationships, it's not because of Vanessa, mm -hmm. it's because of you. Correct. All right, here we go. What, how, how do you start a scene? How do they, what do they, 
You know better. <laughs> action. Action. Okay, mm -hmm. here we go. Can we get an action from somewhere, action. please? Action. Okay, here we go. Action. Man, Braylon. Let me. You already <laughs> see. You already see. How are you supposed to be able to? <laughs> you got to do I'm, I'm Okay, here you do you're already thing. laughing. All right, here we go. Braylon. <laughs> Why do you start this, with Braylon every time? <laughs> go ahead. I'm sorry. Right, let me, right, let me be serious. Here we go. Okay. Hold on. Yo, you get ready. Okay. Here we go. All right. Listen, man. I'm just going to list them. Vanessa. Jessica. Tina. Monique. Where, where are you Veronica, going with this? Where you... All these people. You think all these relationships die out because they all have problems? You think every one of them has a limp? and a lazy eye and has problems that make you not able to see these relationships through? No, the one constant, what's the one variable between Veronica, Tina, Jessica, Lucy? So what am I, what I'm what's understanding the one, right now? What's the now? one variable in that situation? It's you, Braylon. It's me. You're the variable. You're the one person that's the constant. So you got to stop looking up. You're, you're, you're like, you're like Christopher Columbus. You're trying to explore the universe. You're looking at the skies. You're looking at the land. You're looking at the ocean. You're looking at the whole landscape. That's the problem. That's no, no, no. You got to look within. Brandon. Ah, you're within. the problem. And I'm listen. I'm your best friend. I've known you since we're two years old. I'm Gerard. I know you <laughs> since we're two years old, and that's why I'm going to tell you to your face. How many people around you can tell you? What the real problem? This is a loving thing that I'm doing. There's I'm only talking. like six people could tell me. My mom told me last week. Right. I think you heard her on the phone. I did. And so this is coming from my mother, not you. We did uh, have lunch last week. Why are you having lunch with my mom? I've always liked her. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I've now we're going to just... <laughs> that was a great job. And scene. That so was, wait, he did a great job right there. See? As we're bringing this full circle... The same way, you know, you yell at, you know, Modest, Ron, everybody, you tell them things differently as a leader. Give me feedback in the way that you think Mike Davis needs to receive this. Uh, on your acting job. Yeah. You can't step on my lines. You have to gotcha. let me get my lines out before you come with your next line. Okay. Um, you have to convey a little more confidence. And you can't laugh mid-scene. Unless it's a That's joke. True. But you really can't laugh because... You, you also did. You covered your... You, you made... You, yeah. I thought the scene was over at that point because oh. it was like gotcha. up and down a little bit, but I enjoyed it. Listen, well, I also use, um, I think, uh, a couple of guys on the team, they use Rich Paul. I'll, mm -hmm. I'll have him get in touch with, you know. Okay, if you yeah, do, for sure. Have for Rich, some, yeah, Rich reach out to me. With, we'll do some acting. For sure. Know. Rich is my guy. Rich yeah, is my okay, guy. Okay. I'm here for you. I want to <laughs> be in this film. Let's get it done. We can start a whole new one. I have another one that I'm writing right now. I think I'm a character. It's very possible. Right. A lot of people are characters and they don't know it. So just have to be who you are within that character and you'll be great. This is Ignite Takeover. And all I have to say is I am with the Meryl Streep of Ignite. It's Jeremy Pargo. <laughs> Thank you, Meryl. Thank you. <laughs>